It's hard to believe this is day four in our time in Branson. Hi, I'm Byron Tyler, and we're going to bring you some exciting programs here from Branson over the next couple of weeks, and we're kind of wrapping up the thing right now. I hate to say goodbye, Lynn Berry. Oh, my goodness. It goes by fast when you come. Well, we need all hands on deck right now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got Jody Medeiros is here. <laughs> but we are a celebration of swing big bands and the music of the 1940s. My mom and mother-in-law would love to see you right now, Jody. <laughs> you know, I can only imagine. And I'll have to say that I have you know favor of that era too. You know, mm-hmm. yes, yes. It's, it's good to have you on Bot Radio Network. Well, it's great to be with you, Bot Byron. I really appreciate the opportunity to to come in and and chat with you. Well, uh, you have been described as a hometown farm boy who went to New York and made good. You've been in New York for 27 years. <laughs> who said that? I'd like to know. <laughs> Your mother! <laughs> yeah, my mom and yeah, my, my dad. That is, essentially, that is true. I grew up on a 100-acre farm in Pemberville, Ohio. It's a beautiful part of the Buckeye State, yeah. and we have the Portage River is right along the farm, mm. and so we grew up with cattle and uh, sheep, a lot yeah, of sheep, yeah. and uh, of course, we're soybeans and, uh, and mm, corn are yeah. the crops and wheat and so forth. Tell me about some of those farm manners that you took to the Big Apple with you. Oh, golly. Well, where do I start? My grandma Madaris, June Madaris, who's no longer with us, my grandma Madaris probably is the one to blame because uh, she was very, very much all about being united, the American way of being united. And my grandfather, Adolf, that was his name, Adolf Medeiros, yeah. was a Lieutenant J.G. in the United States Navy, and he taught swimming. We need to back up. He was an yeah. immigrant. Uh, he was. He was born in Jur, Hungary, which is just west of Budapest. I've yes. actually been to the house where he was born yes. uh, several years ago. And, uh, of course, they came through Ellis Island in 19, from 1909 to 1911, three different mm-hmm. trips the Medeiroses came here. They went through Ellis Island. Uh, actually donated the Ellis Island in 2001, and my grandpa's name is on a plaque outside. Oh it's kind of nice. But they made their way to Ohio, as many Hungarian uh, immigrants did. Yeah. And from there, they worked and worked and worked. Mm-hmm. That's really the American dream, right, Jody? Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And then uh, around the 1920s, uh, early 1920s, my great-grandfather, uh, Istvan, Stephen, Istvan in mm-hmm. Hungarian, Stephen, was able to purchase the farm. Oh and so we've had that farm since the 1920s. Oh and it's just beautiful, just beautiful. Where did the music and the song, the dance, I mean, <laughs> where, where did that infusion have, come have in Have you ever family? heard of a record player? <laughs> I, uh, growing up with Grandma and Grandpa Medeiros and my Grandma and Grandpa Walston both had record players. And they loved Glenn Miller, the music of the 1940s, Tex Beneke, uh, Benny Goodman, mm-hmm. Frank Sinatra, mm-hmm. Bing Crosby, Dare Bingle. Yeah. So I grew up hearing all of that, yeah. and I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. Your grandmother was extremely active in the American Legion Auxiliary. You got some history there, and you know, the, it, and the DAR. It, it, Part of that is really what helps create all hands on deck. Yes, she. I, I can hear my grandma right now say, "It takes all of us." You know, in a small town, Pemberville, Ohio, we all know each other. We knew each other. We helped each other. The farmers help each other. Uh, In the school, Eastwood High School, I went to a fantastic school in the state of Ohio. The teachers, the students, we all helped each other. We didn't have a lot of the problems that maybe our society has today. And so I do believe I am blessed because of that. Yeah. The generation of of our grandparents is known as the greatest generation. You know, the men and women who sacrificed, who served really to give us uh, the freedoms that we share as Americans today. That's really a missing ingredient, as you say, for this generation. Do you think we can get back to that, that unity for America? Absolutely. All we have to do is become aware that we need to do it. I think it's really simple, meaning uh, younger generations need to become aware. We need to make them aware of the great value of the greatest generation, the great value of our American history, what we've learned so far so that we can take it forward. And I often think about the crank. Never throw away the crank. Mm-hmm. They said, yep. On the farm, say, where's the crank for the farm all? Yeah. You never throw away the crank because you never know when you need it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's very important. I think that's a great point. Well, you did your research. I mean, this show was very thought out. When you looked at 
the former Hollywood stars, that era of time, and, and how they were used so instrumentally yes. to boost the morale of America during wartime. Yes, yes. One of the things I did, in, living in New York for 27 years, you get to go to a place called Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. You can also go to the Paley Center, oh, yes. which is all about television history. It's a fantastic yeah. place. Yeah. But the Paley Center, I was able to get a little cubicle many, many years ago and sit, and I could order and watch Bob Hope. Oh. I could watch Jack <laughs> Benny episodes. Wow. Wow. You weren't allowed to take them home. You could watch them and take yeah. notes. And that's where I learned of the Hollywood Victory Caravan. And that's really what has helped you to design, to bring this to Branson? Yes. How did you make it actually happen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, it's, it's one thing to get the facts, but to right. put the facts you know, on stage. Well, the first thing is I made a decision in 2009 that I, w I was going to write my own show. I just made the decision. I carved the time out. And I said to myself, what ground does Jody Medeiros walk on that no one else walks on? And I thought, okay, I love the music of the 40s. I know where I'm from, my identity as a Madeiras, as an immigrant, you know, from yeah. grandparents to immigrants. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, let's, let's set it with that tone. Let's not try to change anything. Let's not try to add anything. Let's just go back to 1942 in those songs and let the audience decide whether they are having fun or not. Yeah. And so in 2009, I started writing in my little apartment on 50th Street, mm -hmm. New York City. And by 2011, I had the rights to the song. I had a script. I had the character names. Then I needed a title. And I thought, well, it takes all of us. Oh. All hands on deck. My oh. grandpa was in the Navy. It seemed like a no-brainer. <laughs> and that's where that came from. Whoa. And then from there in 2012, I needed to give the show a, a try. Yeah. A friend of mine runs a small community theater in Perrysburg, Ohio, and she gave us the opportunity to do the show for a weekend in Perrysburg, Ohio, near Toledo. Oh, my. And it was a huge smash. Everybody came out. <laughs> I was a star with 90-year-old ladies. I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're so, also a star. 2017 Branson Terry Music Award Morning Show of the Year. 2017 Branson Show Award Most Patriotic Show. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you're the singingest, swingingest at the show in I, town. Yes, Santa Claus yeah. at Radio City coined that phrase. Oh, he really yeah. did. He, yeah. Our, our oh, friend John Paul, who plays Santa Claus, he he uh, came to see us at the Westchester Broadway uh, Theater in, in Elmsford, New York, a couple years ago when we were out on our tour dates. And he said, this is the singingest, swingingest show on the road. Tell me about Valerie Hill. Oh, golly. She's my sweetheart. Yeah? Yeah, I get emotional. I talk about Valerie. Valerie and I have been friends for years before we decided to spend more time together. Mm -hmm. And she plays the role of Betty Blake in the show. She's also an associate producer of the All Hands on Deck show. And she keeps me going. Mm -hmm. she yeah. just, she's the wind beneath my wings. Okay, so how many times you do the show? Where's the show at throughout the summer? Because right. folks are planning their summer vacations Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the All Hands on Deck show is right now in Branson, Missouri at the Dutton Family Theater right on the Strip. We perform mornings only. I'm a morning mm. show guy. Always have been. Buck Trent did an 8 o'clock morning show, yes, and I don't know if he still does or not, <laughs> but I remember getting up bright and early, and I thought, that's so early to go to a show. It was an exciting show. I mean, 8 o'clock in the morning, I don't know what time your show is, but 10, 10 a.m. Yeah, that that yep. gives you a little time to drink some coffee. Ten, and, well, you know, does. <laughs> and one of our sponsors is Maxwell House Coffee. Yeah. Oh, that's, right. Right. that's perfect. <laughs> perfect. So tell me about the show. Yeah, well, and our other sponsor is L&J Plumbing Supply, yeah. Branson. In Missouri, I yeah. should mention that too. Right. But the entire show is an authentic road show and radio broadcast, which is right up your alley. I love that. From that 1942. So, Act One is a road show, all those classic songs from the 1940s, a fantastic sing along, a lot of great Broadway style tap dancing. And then in Act Two, we turn the stage into a live radio broadcast. Yeah. So, yeah. Our, our audience becomes a studio audience. We teach them how to applaud. <laughs> and uh, and all of that oh, jazz, it. and it is so much fun. Well, that's what makes Branson fun because you get to engage and interact with the shows. You know, you're not just being entertained; you're part of the show many times when you come. And no exception here with all hands on deck. So, what's the best way to get tickets, and how do you find out about the show? Yeah, the best way to get tickets. Well, I might, might I also mention our musicians very oh, quickly. Oh, yeah. It's a nine piece I, orchestra. I, yeah, it's a nine piece big band orchestra, yeah. and I do believe I have the be very best musicians in all of Branson. And from our woodwinds to our wow. brass to our rhythm, everything. And to, to get tickets, it's very, very simple. 
you can go to www.allhandsondeckshow.com. You'll find our schedule, a ticket link there, or just simply call 417-332-2772. And that's the Dutton Family Theater box office. You got a couple little lines you might want to sing for us? Oh, my gosh. Pardon me, boys. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Yes, yes. Track 29. Oh, you can give me a shine. How's that? I love it. Thank you, Jody Medeiros. Thank you so much. Thanks, All Hands Byron. On what Deck. a treat. Great hey, to be with you. Again, the website is allhandsondeckshow.com. Come see us. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Thank you so much. God bless.